loading up. Oh, I see Melinda. <gasps> oh, look Here at you, multi, multi-platforming. You see? What? No. What's that? Michael. This is Facebook. Oh my god! Hey, there's Brittany! Uh, oh, that was me a minute ago. That's weird. <laughs> we are in the future. Here we go. All right. Oh my gosh. Hi there. I am Michael Stevenson. I'm the producing artistic director at Capital Stage in Sacramento. And I want to welcome you to this evening's season announcement which is a little different this year. Um, I wanted to tell you a little story before we got started. Uh, we were sitting in a preview for admissions. It was March 11th and we had a heck of a show and I was just thinking, wow, this is gonna be terrific. And the next day the hammer came down and everything changed. And it's been a crazy time for us. And uh, I'm very excited to say we are gonna have next season open as soon as we can. So. I've titled this season um, Hope Defiant because I know there's things we can do in the theater that will bring people together in a way that no other medium can. And when the government gives us the go ahead and Governor Newsom says go, we're gonna go. And I'm so excited I have a bunch of really talented actors who've all been on our stage before to read a little bit of all the scenes that are coming up. Uh, and I will introduce them to you as they come up in the, actually, you know what? Why don't we do that right now? I'm just gonna introduce everybody. Uh, why don't I start with Karen? Can you introduce yourself, Karen? Hi, I'm Karen Vance. And uh, the last role. The last show I was in a cast stage was The Humans earlier this season. Great. And Brittany. Hi, I'm Brittany Barger. I was recently in The Wickhams, Christmas Septemberly, playing Lizzie Darcy. Austin on lockdown. You, yeah, you've been there for a long time. <laughs> Christine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine David. I was most recently seen in The Humans with Karen. Yay. <laughs> Melinda. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Melinda Perrette. Oh, and I was, la, the last time I was at Cap Stage, I was Juliana in The Other Place, directed by Michael Stevenson. Joe Mar. Hi, I'm Joe Mar Tag Attack. And uh, the last time I was at Cap Stage, I was Quang in Viet Gone. Awesome. Uh, Amy. Um, hi, I'm Amy. Last show I was in actually, uh, I have to say is admissions. We're in the, it, right? Yeah. And then. Yes. Yeah. Great. And Jacob, newest member. Hi, I'm Jacob Fluckier and I was recently in admissions as well. That's awesome. Great. Thanks, you guys. Uh, so the 16th season, Hope to Defiant, there's a lot of characters in these plays that will stand up and be resilient in the face of adversity. Uh, and one of them, the first play I had the pleasure of seeing at a showcase, the NNPN showcase in Atlanta, it's called Predictor by Jennifer Blackmer. And it's set in 1967. And it's the true story of Margaret Crane, who was a graphic designer who invented the first in-home pregnancy test. And that was in 1967. So it's an amazing comedy that has her real story. We're hoping that she will come visit us. She is alive still and uh, it would be amazing to get her at the premiere. But now to get a little story, get a little sense of the feel of it, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to a little scene here with Melinda and Christine. How long does it take for you to get here from the town? An hour and a half. Oh, so that's why you were late. I was late? The workday begins promptly at 8.30 a.m. You arrived at 8.42. How do you know that? It's my job to know things. I caught the earliest bus. Don't you think you're setting a bad example? For whom? My office is in the dining room. This is your area. Where's the door? There is no door. Please be neat. People walk through here. They do? There's storage on the second floor, so people come in and out all the time. And then there's the basement. What's down there? Rabbits. Rabbits, right. <laughs> the rabbits supply blood for di diagnostic tests. 
They're bled. A lot. Bled, as in, well, that's horrible. <laughs> A necessary part of the good work we do at Organon Pharmaceuticals. We save lives. But the screaming does get rather loud. I run errands when the bleeders come. Errands? Over to the main building, pick up mail, memos, that sort of thing. Who else works here? In the house? Just us two. You'll get used to the walk. Get slippery in the snow. Also, I don't know what they told you, but I don't work for you. They didn't tell me anything. I am junior executive assistant for Mr. Thompson, Buck, and Brackett. Why aren't you in the main building with the others? Because I'm not. Why? Because I'm junior executive assistant to Mr. Thompson, Buck, and Brackett. I arrive precisely at 819 every morning. Seeing as how I will always be here before you, I will make the coffee. Do you know how to use a stovetop percolator? I'm sure you'll teach me. No, I, I mean it, I'm a quick study. What do you do? I beg your pardon? What is your job? Why are you here? Oh, I'm a graphic designer. I'm an artist. I knew an artist once. You did? He used a lot of rubber cement. Do you use rubber cement? I, uh, yeah, I do. It smells terrible. Give me a frightful headache. I'm sure it's bad for you too. Probably full of all sorts of terrible things. You should ask one of the lab technicians to give you a list of the compounds in rubber cement. I'll do that. Well, thank you for the tour. <laughs> I guess I'll get started. On what? Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. Uh, Melinda. Particular. Uh, Jennifer Blackmer. Uh, this next play, so, I told you that story. I was sitting there on March 11th watching admissions happen and then Godzilla attacked the city and it has not stopped yet, but it made me so mad because we had such a terrific cast. And the, Josh Harmon is one of my absolute favorite playwrights. So I'm bringing admissions back this fall uh, and I'm so excited about it. And uh, Beth and Richard and uh, what, where's she, Michelle, if you're out there, know that that's coming your way. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, and Amy and Jacob are both coming back. I think Jacob's going back. Yeah, yeah, hello. Okay, uh, this next play. Every year people give me scripts uh, and sometimes I get an avalanche of the same script from many different people. A couple of years ago, Sweat was that script. And this year, Hold These Truths by Gene Sakata came to me. Literally four different people gave me the script and said, you have to do this. So I feel lucky enough to be presenting this script. I talked to Gene. It's a story of Jordan, uh, excuse me, Gordon Hirabayashi, who sued the United States during World War II when they were interning Japanese Americans in internment camps. And he brought this case all the way to the Supreme Court. And now we're gonna hear a short um, piece from it. And Jomar Tagatak is gonna be starring in the role and Jeffrey Lowe, who directed Viet Gone, is gonna be coming back to direct. Jomar. Summer of 1940. The end of my junior year. I arrive in New York for a YMCA leadership training program called the President's School. And since the National Student Y is a politically liberal group, we're in seminars with A.J. Must and Evan Thomas, advocates of social action and opposition to war. And I'm just eating it up. But the question of pacifism isn't an easy one. Fascism is spreading in Europe. Uh, Mussolini in Italy, General Franco in Spain, country after country brutally overthrown by the Germans, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Norway, Denmark, and with England threatened next, impassioned debates are everywhere. 
like at the Union Theological Seminary where we work the noontime shifts for meals. And then when we aren't debating or working, we hit the streets of Manhattan. I take the subway everywhere, Chelsea, Harlem, Greenwich Village, Broadway, Brooklyn, Battery Park. Everywhere, the blur of the city speeds past my window, subway doors shut behind my back, not before my face. And in the midst of the city, amid the taxis, subways, trains, and people, people everywhere, it hits me. They aren't here. Those signs in the windows, in the shops, museums, or movie theaters, or even in the coffee shop on 80th with the 15 cent chicken dinners. I walk into that coffee shop, just push the door and go inside and sit down at a table and no one asks me to leave. I go to a movie theater, I take my ticket and walk inside and I sit in the orchestra section. I stand in line at a museum. I pay admission, head inside. Hey, you, come back here. Here it is. I brace myself. That's not enough. Uh, excuse me? I said, that's not enough. Oh, uh, not enough. Oh, oh, uh, not enough money, you mean? What the hell do you think I mean? Oh, uh, right, uh, let me check. Gee, I, I don't seem to have it, but no student discount on Fridays. Next. Wait, uh, ma'am. Wait, uh, one question, please. Hey, wise guy, step aside. There are all other people behind you. If I had enough, I could go in? Enough, enough what? Well, in enough money, the admission price. If I had it, I could go in? Jesus Christ, yeah, you could. Now beat it, buddy, scram. I can't go in simply because I can't afford it. I let that sink in for a minute because, because, I mean, back home in Seattle, I always have to think ahead if I go out with the fellas or if I take a gal on a date. I can go here. I can't go there. I'll get turned out of the Miramar. Better avoid Pacific Street. Better take the long way around. But here, but here, I spring for lots more of those 15 cent chicken dinners. Hit the Metropolitan on Tuesday nights with admission is free. Ride a bus to Harlem to hear a gospel choir and elevator up to the top of the Empire State Building. And I'm feeling as if some heavy weight has lifted off my chest. Feeling a new surge of endless possibilities. Feeling as if I've finally joined the human race. Thank you, Jomar. It's great. That's Hold These Truths, which will be uh, in the January slot. Next up, uh, about four years ago, Antoinette Nwandu handed me a copy of a play at the NNPN showcase and said, hey, would you read this and let me know what you think? And I thought, okay, and I read it. And my thought was, this is one of the great American plays. And we had scheduled it for this season um, and I just can't let this play go. So we're gonna be doing Passover in the spring slot. Uh, Lisa Marie Rollins is on deck to direct. We're so excited. Uh, it's an amazing, extraordinary script and it's just what we're trying to do. It's a story of Moses and Kitsch, two young black men trying to get out, trying to find their way to the promised land. It's in a startling early original and beautifully poetic and profane and extraordinary story. So we're excited, excited to have that back. And then uh, last but not least in our regular season, Cry It Out by Molly Smith Metzler, an extraordinary story about motherhood and professional identity and who are you after you have a baby and the struggles of being a new mother. And it follows Jesse and Lena, two women from very different backgrounds who share a backyard and they come for a coffee date together just in range of their baby monitors. So uh, Karen and Brittany, can you start us off? Oh my God, this was such a great idea. Shh. 
sorry. The, the, it's the window. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Where is she? Is she right up there? On the second floor. Yeah. So it, just, so I need to shut my big mouth is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't interrupt you, did I? Oh, are you kidding? I leapt for joy when I got your text. I was talking to my breast pump in there like it was Wilson from Castaway. <laughs> <laughs> I know we do. <laughs> Here, uh, uh, two sugars, one milk, right? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> so what do you think? Your monitor over to my patio? I don't know. Let me see. Um, okay. I can see the baby. Still see him. Still see him. Nope, I can't go past here. Oh. Okay, uh, let's go to your yard. No, there's a ton of dog shit over there. Um, don't be silly. <laughs> let's see how far mine can make it. It's supposed to go 65 feet, so. No, it ends right here. All right then, X my <laughs> We can just stand here awkwardly. <laughs> uh. I'm so sorry, we don't have any patio furniture. We haven't gotten around to it yet. Oh, well, uh, what if I drag the playset over and we could sit on that? That is a great idea. Here, give me your coffee. Oh my God, this is great coffee. You are an amazing coffee maker. I could make love to you with my mouth right now. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, cheers. <laughs> To napping babies. <laughs> May they nap long and prosper. I'm sorry, I don't know why. That was weird to say. <laughs> I got like 20 minutes of sleep last night. <laughs> oh, please, girl. I was right there with you. <sighs> this playset rocks. I mean, how do you already have it assembled? Do you have like a 12 week old? My husband, Nate, he gets this sense of purpose out of assembling things. You should see our nursery. He is. He has set up every single baby safety gadget known to man to the point where I, I kid you not, Lena, I cannot access the room. I can't get in. It's like it's it's rigged with baby lasers. I. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? Better than that than a guy who doesn't do Jack, right? I mean, okay. John is pretty good. He gets up in the middle of the night. He does the middle of the night diaper change. But a lot of my friends back home are with such D bags. I... Where's home? South Shore, Long Beach, you been? I think so. There's a boardwalk there, right? Right. Uh, and all those people eating cotton candy on the boardwalk? I am related to every single one of them. Okay, try it. Call out the name Bustamante and every head turns. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Where are you from? Oh, outside Chicago. Oh, shit. Tell me you're not a Cubs fan. A what? Cubs. You a Cubs fan? Is that baseball? <laughs> oh, good. We can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> good, because I really want to be friends, Lena. <laughs> Sorry, that was. Oh, I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> now you think I? Now you think I'm like desperate or, or crazy or something? No, no. <laughs> it's just I. I just. Uh, I, I've had like a really hard time finding other moms here, you know, like, a, a, and you're so cooped up all day long with the baby and it's like the baby's sleeping and the husbands are working and <laughs> where are all the moms? <laughs> oh, this is North Shore, honey. Nanny Central. All the moms are in Soul Cycle or at Bliss getting a raindrop facial. <laughs> Speaking of, my ass is extremely wet right now. Is your ass wet? Yes, yeah, uh-huh, it's wet. Um, I'll go get us a towel. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was just checking if you were wet too. I, after being pregnant, I honestly can't tell when I've peed myself. This is my That's, life. That is so true, that is my life. It's, it's so disgusting and very, very true. <laughs> awesome, thank you guys. Brittany, you had to tell me later how you got the coffee cup across from your screen into hers. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm magic. Like, Zoom magic. <laughs> and I, uh, thank you. It's great.
I actually skipped the play, I can't believe it, play four. And that is uh, an extraordinary comedy that made me laugh out loud, but also made me think about our world today. Uh, this just came off Broadway, it's a New York Times critics pick. Uh, and it deals with a young fact checker named Jim Fingal, who's obsessive about the truth and facts, which is an interesting thing to have in our time. And he has been hired to be a fact checker on this veteran writer, John Degata's story. And he meets with John Degata's agent at first to talk about the assignment. Amy and Jacob, take it away. Oh, did I lose them? There we go. Amy, you have to unmute. Sorry. Okay. Uh, no problem, Jim no problem. Fingal. Okay, okay, Jim Fingal. <laughs> So you're interning with Bob down in editorial? Yes. How long have you been with us? Uh, just under six months. And what's Bob got you doing? Uh, apart from making copy, which I think he makes me do as a joke. <laughs> Research, copy editing, that sort of thing. Well, tell me about yourself. I was a joint concentrator in computer science and journalism. I wrote a few stories and some editorials for the Crimson. Harvard. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and whatever jobs I got after college were just marking time until I got here, where I'm really happy. Wow, the wall of fame. What is that, 50 years of autographed covers? 52. Oh, what's can khaki can khaki illinois our beloved production facility the largest in the country they do everyone us first conde nas time incorporated simon and schuster the ones that are left now then why are you here why am i um... yeah what do you want to do well whatever it is you want me to do that's a cute answer but what plans? Um, uh, where do I see myself in five years? Something like that. Uh, well, my next step is, is this, trying to get a chance to fact check this article. Now, Bob tells me you're very talented and, and trustworthy. Oh, that's very kind. So you're looking to stay at the magazine? Um, absolutely, particularly given the kind of work I've seen this magazine capable of. You don't like the direction? That's not what I... No, 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 I think it's wonderful that you have standards. Just as long as you understand that compromises we have to often make between material that pushes the envelope. And stuff that sells magazines, absolutely. Oh, and ads. You get it. I try to. So the assignment is a final fact check for me personally, the John Degada piece. I, uh, I need it quickly and the special volunteer will give up their weekend. Oh, yes, that sounds fun. So well, you'd be well, up fun, for it. Okay. Yeah, John Degata, absolutely. You've heard of him? Oh, David Foster Wallace called him one of America's most significant living writers. He thinks essays are an irreducible literary art form, like fiction and poetry. But he hasn't published anything in a long time, right? you knew about him or you googled him on your way up i've read some of his work but yeah i i, I searched and, and found out what i could so kind of kind of both okay now tell me what do you bring to the project well there's my experience at the crimson some fact checking there and i really think i can help you because of my other skills uh c plus plus python lisp and what are those? Computer languages. Well, scripting languages, most of them. Okay. I write custom searches and automated batch apps that grab a lot of more information than most people usually get. Most people just kind of use Google. My way is both faster and it's more productive. Well, Bob said you were fast, but we need you to be careful. I'm careful. Great. Thank you guys, terrific.
So much great work there. Thank all of you actors. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And we'll see you around the theater. So proud you've all worked for us and hope to see you again soon. Bye, everyone. You guys take care. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you so Bye, much. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Um, so the one thing I didn't mention was the holiday play and the we could really use something that brings us joy right now. And one of the things that has brought me the most joy is um, the Wickham's Christmas at Pemberley, which we're gonna bring back at holiday season uh, with almost the entire original cast. So we're very excited about that. So I am about to hand the ball off to Mr. Keith Rydell, who is waiting to give you details about subscriptions. And uh, I will just do that. Keith, take it away. Michael, thank you so much. And thanks uh, for, Another wonderful uh, season, our 16th season coming up. You know, I was, um, I've been thinking about um, uh, our resiliency at Capitol Stage and I was thinking about why we're, why we're important uh, to Sacramento and to the theater world at large. And I keep on coming back to this little show we did in 2015 called Mr. Burns, a post-electric play where all these people gather um, uh, after an apocalypse and they need wow. together and they need to come together around a fire to tell stories and to share stories. And really that's what we need right now. And so I'm so happy to, to be looking at this live feed and, and realizing this is our best uh, attended season announcement ever in our, in our 16 years or our 15 years now. So uh, thank awesome. you all for being here. Um, so subscribers, you're gonna be able to start uh, renewing your subscriptions starting tonight. And uh, you'll receive an email uh, with your subscription renewal package uh, and also it will be on our website as well. I just wanted to show you a little bit about what that's gonna look like. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and uh, if I can uh, figure out the technology here and share my screen uh, and uh, here we go. And so you probably recognize this form here and you're gonna be getting one of these in the mail. And um, uh, there's a couple of uh, things you can do um, to fill this out here. Uh, right at the top here, you can select if you want your tickets to be mailed to you or you want them left at will call. So you'd pick them up every performance. And so, uh, and then you would find uh, what plan that you want to uh, sign up for. And you would check that off here in one of your plans. And there's the, uh, we're offering the same subscription plans as we did uh, in these, uh, on our past seasons here. And so then you would just kind of fill out the form here and uh, walk through it here and um, go ahead and do all of this stuff here. And I'm not gonna go ahead and bore you all with the typing, um, but be sure that if you have uh, two people, you put your handling fee in there. Uh, sometimes a lot of people forget that as well. And if you want to put your credit card number down here, go ahead and fill this entire form out with your name address over here. Uh, if you wanna change your seats, check that up over here. And if you have any special seating needs uh, here. And uh, we're gonna be accepting renewals until June 15th. So what you want to do with this form after you fill it out, there's a couple of ways you can get it to the box office. You can go ahead and save this to your uh, computer if you want to save the completed form as a PDF and just email it to box office at capstage.org. Uh, another way is just to print it out and send it uh, via snail mail. And those two ways are probably the most preferred. You can always call the box office, but since we've been hearing a lot about flattening the curve lately, um, you know, we'll have a lot of people calling the box office in the next two weeks. So Please be patient. Um, we are uh, operating with reduced staff hours right now. The box office always does a great job of getting back to people, but it may take a little longer if you do call the box office. Uh, but um, but there, those are the ways that you can get your subscription renewal uh, in to, um, uh, to Capital Stage. Uh, you wanna print out maybe the second page of your renewal packet because it's gonna have all the dates for the different plans here. So you just uh, print that out, tack it up on your, your refrigerator to remind you what your dates are. But of course, we're gonna remind you about your dates before the season starts. And once again, we are doing Cap Stage Gives Back where we give back uh, ticket vouchers to other nonprofits. And especially now with everything that has happened, this is really, really important. So if you have a favorite nonprofit, this is a way for us to give back to the community as well as to recognize what's important to our subscribers. So if you wanna go ahead and fill this form out, go ahead and fill it out, let the box office know what your charity is of choice and they will get 10 ticket vouchers and they can give them out to clients, they can give them out to staff, volunteers, 
however they want to use these vouchers. We don't dictate what that is, but we do ask that it be a local nonprofit uh, here in Sacramento, and they, they indeed are a nonprofit. And so um, really quickly, that's the, that's the subscription forum. Um, and we really hope you'll be coming back this season. We, were, um, we have uh, increased our subscriber base uh, every year. We were very close to having 2,300 subscribers this year. We missed it just by a few. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna beat that record uh, next year, I'm sure. So, uh, and of course, please email the box office or call them if you have any questions and stay safe, stay well. And when this is all over and we're gonna come back safely and we're gonna come back together and we're gonna come back strong. So thank you for being part of this wonderful live stream tonight. Thank you, Keith. And that's really a big step that we got that live PDF that you can fill out online actually. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing to you. Um, it's a big thank you. Uh, first of all, to our donors, our subscribers, uh, the artists, the board, um, our patrons, our volunteers, we could not do what we do without you, um, and all the more so in this really unprecedented time. Uh, I have a vision of being on the other side of this, and I think it's really important to hold that up as we go forward, and we will be ready when the door opens to get back to the theater. I was there the other day and walking, looking at the ghost light and thinking, boy, there's nothing stranger than a theater without people in it. So I look forward to that day. We're gonna keep you safe. Uh, we'll follow all the regulations, but I. Hope to see you in the fall at the theater. Thank you so much.